Now, in Chicago, we have seen developments thrown up without a word of community getting to weigh in on the process. And in response to this commonplace disrespect and disregard for people, Elevated Chicago decided to engage with community engagement principles in 2018 and embed these into the work. Authentic community engagement, striving to interact with people at the beginning, before the beginning, rather than coming to ask, do you like this? Whether when the paper's already signed and the, hug, the hole is already dug in the ground. So these community engagement principles were ended up being adopted by multiple city offices, including CDPH, CMAP, CPS, and the mayor's office. But a lot has changed since 2018. And we are doing a refresh now to build on that foundation we started with and have more actionable recommendations as well as recommendations for how to address community engagement in a hybrid world. And Duo is leading our refresh, founded by two brothers, Carlos and Rafa, in 2019. And <laughs> thank, thank. And they look beyond just designing buildings or objects, but looking at the design of the systems that either hold us up or keep us down. And they specialize in multi-contextual design, which recognizes that we don't live in a 2D world or a static world, but a world that has shifting sands and global pandemics and racial uprisings, and acknowledging that we need to have new norms and new forms and adapt to the world around us. So I will now pass it over to Duo. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we know a lot of you in the audience, and if you know us, you know we're better off the cuff, but to keep with time, we prepared a video. So, this so will you're going to see our, our phones in our hands. We're going to make sure we stick to the slides, and if we mess up, you can laugh. It's okay. Um, all right, let's start the video. So hi, everyone. We're the co-founders of Duo, an innovation studio based in Chicago, focused on creating built environment innovations for the benefit of society. As many of you know, we created multi-contextual design, a practice grounded in deeply understanding context and working with residents and organizations to rethink norms and give form to new interventions, both tangible and intangible, for our collective well-being. We're excited to work with Elevated on the refresh of the community engagement principles, and we're going to walk through our work and our process. And this, this work is really grounded on Elevated's mission, right? Uh, and this coalition believes that there's just a real opportunity to rethink community engagement in general. So we're going to share what we mean by that. Um, but first, we're going to talk a little bit about like, what are the engagement principles and why use them. And really, at their core, they are really meant to help people uh, engage with residents in principled and ethical ways. As Janice mentioned, they were written in 2018, but a lot has changed that since then. So we wanted to explore what needed to change to make it, and make it more actionable in today's context. We won't go over them today, but we encourage you to visit them in the uh, front room. Um, but they really are essentially all grounded in sharing power and respect with the people that we engage with and build environment decisions, right? They've been welcomed by many of you, so they really demonstrate that it is important to hold residents at the center of all engagement and decision making. And that's what was really driving this, this, this work. One thing we were all clear on was that the principles were very dense, right? It was a 50 page PDF. So we were thinking, okay, how can they be more actionable and adopted uh, and may more, um, be more adopted? So the ambition was really to amplify community power, to foster deeper participation and decision making in the built environment by distributing that decision making rights to community members themselves who are interested in the betterment of neighborhoods through the creation of tools and processes that facilitate engagement and information sharing for people working to improve our collective well-being. So other than being a mouthful, right, that's really what guided our work, right? So we did this together with the Elevated team, and that's really what we held as our North Star through the entire project. So great statement, but Rob, want to tell us how we did it? Yeah. So to create a participatory tool, we used a participatory process. So we really set out talking to engagement organizers, some of you in the room, uh, who are interested in talking to residents, and we also wanted to learn from residents who are impacted by development so that we could understand the relationship between them and their ways of working. We did all these things in um, hope to create more usable tools to gather resident input and turn it into action. 
Uh, we wanted to make it easier for residents to participate in public processes, and we wanted to make it easier for engagement organizers to gather input ethically and effectively. Uh, as you know, uh, engagement can sort of be anxiety inducing. You want to do it right, and you want to do it well, and you sometimes don't know what methods to use. So that's what we set out to do. And what we did really boiled down to seven expert interviews with community engagement professionals, right, people that do this for a living. Uh, we observed 15 engagement events from public meetings to events to we saw surveys, we saw, you know, kind of the broad gamut of it all. 13 Intercept means people that we engage with, you know, that weren't affiliated to a formal organization to learn from, you know, real perspectives. And we reviewed over 50 uh, resources related to community engagement. And that was our Miro board uh, mess over there. Uh, but we heard four main uh, theme insights, really. The first one, you will be familiar, was from an other staff person. Um, it's really hard to get people to come to meetings, but we do our best at sharing information, right? What I really shared is that community engagement usually means meeting or survey, right? So there is a big opportunity to make it more, you know, move beyond that. The second one also will be familiar. Why would I take time out of my day to go? What's going to come out of it? And this one really show, showed us that really the onus of engagement is usually put onto the residents themselves, who often are, like, don't have the time, right? So how can we move beyond that and think of ways that the engagement can be structured and enjoyable? The third one was around really confirming the fact that the principles uh, from 2018 remained relevant in today's context, right? They were really like ahead of their time talking about racial equity and things like that in 2018. But uh, people familiar with the principles really encouraged to think of how to really drive them into action and adoption. So that's really one, one thing that was key. Um, and the third one was uh, an interesting quote from an engagement professional saying, I've sort of learned how to do this over the years. You know good engagement when you see it. And that really showed us that engagement is a real discipline, right? But there's a lot of resources out there and there are limited structure learning opportunities. So all these things uh, led us to think of how we were going to design this next iteration. Yeah. So we were thinking, how might we make all public engagement follow ethical principles and move beyond meetings to make sure that understanding context is not just asking people to come to us? Uh, how might we facilitate engagement design that delights participants and is inclusive and makes people want to show up? How might we turn the community engagement principles into action um, so that more people can adopt them? How might we share the craft of community engagement? Think of you know, all the professionals and their tools and sort of how can we disseminate that? And finally, how might we always engage in the field at a hyper-local level, not at a distance, not from an office, not from a different city? So we're taking these norms and really challenging them. So the drum product roll. we designed, drum, drum roll, roll with cat. a funny cat. Uh. We created in field one, a first of its kind kit with structured methods and tactics for community engagement. This will be a new product partnership between Duo and Elevated Chicago, um, and it will help to, you know, provide tools to engagement professionals and residents. Wait, 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 but, all right. We know that people are tired of toolkits and frameworks, right? So these tweets say, our toolkit doesn't actually have any tools. It's a PDF. Our working group created a framework for making a toolkit for writing a best practice. Ouch. So how are we going to fix that? I mean, yeah, but what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. So. What if we took a little bit of inspiration from the most famous kit of it all, right? The, the first aid kit. So it turns out this kit uh, was in, invented in the late 1800s and responded to the need of um, saving railroad workers' lives, right? At the time, limited infrastructure, poor connectivity, people were dying all the time. Uh, Mr. Robert Wood Johnson actually uh, invented this kit where you actually curate all the essentials to basically save a tourniquet. Right, so tourniquet life. So anybody with minimal training, just using what's in the box, would be able to save a life. But this is a physical box. Yeah, it's so like physical stuff. In yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would it look like, right, for community engagement principles to be in a physical box? Like, what would it be like that you need to hand over to somebody and be like, do these things, and you'll be all set. So that's really the question that we set to answer, right? Like, is that what? There is a finite number of resources, and that's kind of how we came up with this. So we reviewed over 150 documents, all kinds of toolkits, PDFs, from design thinking to anthropology to game theory. Thank you, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and we had a lot of follow-up conversations with the Elevated family and other experts. 
uh, to come up with a structure for the kit that we invite you to learn more about. But the kit is really aimed to help practitioners and residents to carry out that organized engagement based on the elevated Chicago uh, community engagement principles at, at its core. Yeah, and there's mainly four elements. The first one is the refreshed and condensed elevated Chicago principles to literally have in your back pocket as reference, making part of your daily life. Second one, planning foundations that you can see more in our room. But really, this will help you guys, like, who, what is my timeline? Do I want this to be an ownership project, an informing project? Who needs to be present? Then based on that, your number three, engagement methods and tactics, you can be like, oh, do I need a meeting? Do I need to do a focus group, interview? Can I just do more observations? Do I really need a survey? Uh, and then lastly, four is giving you tools that actually help you synthesize and be able to share that story in an organized way. So who is this for really, right? So we're making this mainly for engagement professionals, developers, and the residents themselves. As Commissioner Navarro said earlier, sometimes you know, we recognize this as nested and you are all of them at times. So with these tools, we really hope that engagement professionals you can use them to enhance their craft and share it with others. Developers, we intentionally aim it at developers who are uh, really looking to connect with communities and learn from them and distribute power, not the traditional developer that you know, doesn't, is not interested in that. And then finally, for residents, we want this kit to be an easy enough tool to be picked up and used to organize and put their demands into action. Uh, so we invite you to learn more in our little room over there. We have a prototype of the cards and some placemats. And if you're working on a project, we are very happy to walk on uh, some uh, engagement planning with you live. And it's not going to take that long. So thank you for your time. Thank you all.